Hello everyone, uh, this is Santi Dominguez and uh, I am here today with uh, Pablo Monge who is, we are going to be sharing this session uh, in which we aim to give you an introduction and an idea um, of what you can achieve with our simple mixture analysis uh, plugin of MNOVA. This is part of a series as you probably already know and you know since many of us at least in some of the countries that people will be joining from are uh, with this lockdown situation we thought it was a good opportunity to try to you know help our users by by using the time to do some training so that uh, people can become more 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 aware and more competent with some of our uh, software tools. Uh, so we will be covering a number as part of this series, which you can you can view it on the on our website on that link at the top. Uh, we will be covering a number of other sessions. Uh, 3D. There is a webinar on Wednesday uh, on solving 3D structures by NMR with Stereofita, and then next week we are covering quantitative NMR, chemical shift perturbation, and electronic laboratory notebooks. And then the week after, uh, automation, uh, which again is something that could help many of you become more more effective with the software. And and we haven't announced the the next sessions yet, but the the idea is to do a number of other follow up sessions. There are at least now five or six extra ones planned, and I think Ike plans to send an email with an update so that people can start registering. Uh, for a number of other things. So we will be covering mass spec, uh, NMR prediction, automatic structure verification, tips and tricks for using general and NOVA, and as well as uh, databases or making your data searchable uh, so that you can have access to it more easily, and, and also ligand binding screening, and, and possibly more as well. So, you know, we don't know how long this situation is going to last. We we will try to keep going so that at least um, everybody who is interested can use the time a little bit to get a, a little bit of value from, from these presentations. Okay, so without further ado, uh, today we are talking about SMA, which is a plugin of MNOVA. It stands for Simple Mixture Analysis. And what we really mean by that is a simple tool for analyzing mixtures. Uh, so, you know, they, you're not limited to analyzing simple mixtures only, but it's rather that it is a very simple workflow for analyzing mixtures. And what the workflow does is to identify and to quantify components in the mixture. Uh, it uses the quantification capabilities that we, we have built within, within MNOVA, and in fact, the, there will be a session next week on quantification, so we can revisit that a little bit uh, at, at a more basic level. Uh, they will be looking at concentration and, pu and purity stroke potency for APIs, etc. Uh, but uh, in SMA, we're using the quantification capabilities in the context of analyzing mixtures. And it builds on a concept of libraries. And what this means is that the way SMA is thought out and it has been designed, it allows you to build methods, to add those methods to libraries and to later uh, reuse those methods. So, for example, an expert user can develop methods for non-expert users or you can develop methods for yourself and then use them very quickly uh, without any uh, preparation in future. And as usual with ANOVA, we try to make the, the workflow as flexible and user-friendly as possible. Uh, Pablo is going to be showing us in a few minutes with a practical session that you guys will be able to follow. And, well, we'll let you be the judge of whether we have succeeded in making it uh, easy to use. And okay, so what does the plugin do? Um, basically, the, the main objectives are, first of all, targeted analysis. And what this means is that uh, the first thing the plugin does is to identify components of interest. Okay, this could be components of a known mixture, they could be metabolites, uh, but also by identifying the expected components in the mixture, it, it can also identify the presence of unexpected components. And then for each one of those components of, in, of interest, it will quantify them. 
uh, by using a series of advanced tools for quantification that we have within within MNOVA. And in cases, you can go further by using chemometrics capabilities uh, to extract information in situations, for example, where you may have overlapping of tools, where there is uh, hidden spectral information, etc. And then, uh, finally, we also allow, uh, want to uh, facilitate the reporting process. So here, um, in, this, in this image on the right, you have a bit of an example of what a report may look like, quantifying a number of components, reporting the results uh, with uh, a series of information that can be that can be customized and reflecting in the spectrum the different components where they have been identified as well as the as well as the integration okay so basically identify quantify extract additional information from mixtures and build reports easily that is the workflow that we're trying to that we're trying to support what the software allows you to do is to use a graphical interface to develop um, methods, as I said earlier. Uh, these methods can then be repeated uh, in a robust workflow uh, to allow you to determine identity and, and quantification, and they can be used by non-experts because once the method has been developed, it, it is very simple to use or to deploy Probably without you, you can you can even use it to quantify components even if you don't really have uh, an understanding of NMR as a, as an analytical technique. And in addition to simplifying the process, we also uh, have tried to streamline it so to make it very automatable, so that not only non-expert users can use it, but also it can potentially be deployed as a fully automatic process. Uh, to quantify mixtures of interest, okay? So it can also be used in an unattended fashion. Um, of course, uh, one thing or one word of caution about targeted analysis is that, you know, NMR should, you know, you should ask yourself the question of whether NMR is the suitable technique to, to do the analysis. Um, if it is, then, Provided that you can, provided that you can see the signals of interest, then you can design an analysis. You can validate it and test it within the workflow. Um, I think Pablo is going to show us today the workflow with 1D um, NMR spectra, probably proton. It can be used for any other nuclei as, nuclei as, as well. But and also we are implementing uh, 2D experiments as part of the latest version of SMA, okay? So in situations where, for example, you may need more resolution and you may need separation that you don't get in the 1D spectrum, uh, you can also incorporate it to the, to the spectra into the analysis. Okay. Now, the Maybe a word on equations. As you will see when we show you the tool, uh, there are a series of predetermined equations for uh, which are quantification equations. Uh, we are in, we are trying to include all the standard methods that are established within the NMR community and are regularly being used for quantification. But there is also the opportunity for users to define their own equations. So for those more advanced uses, and those equations again can be included as part of as part of um, a method that can then be used uh, or deployed to other users. Um, and even empirical equations can be reproduced. So you know you can you have a lot of flexibility in the complexity of the equations that you can implement within the methods. And as I was saying earlier, you can use combine multiple spectra uh, to be able to mention. Some things on the analysis, uh, you know, MNOVA is a, is a very advanced processing and analysis tool for NMR data. And there are a number of things that make it particularly uh, amenable for this kind of analysis. Um, firstly, of course, um, it, can, it can identify in the whole spectral range, but it can also, I, it, it also ha understands the concept of multiplets. So you don't, you're not restricted to only looking at quantifying peaks, but MNOVA can peak, can group uh, peaks into multiplets. 
and can therefore uh, work with the concept of multiplets or even the relationship in the in the in the quantification information between different different multiplets. Um, it allows you to exclude uh, ranges that uh, are undesirable, for example, because there is saturation, there is uh, maybe the solvent suppression is not sufficient, or maybe even because you have a lot of complication and signals and the compounds that you're looking for um, are not in that area. So you can, uh, you can store all these things uh, for example, the, the multiples that you want to look at, the areas you want to ignore, etc. Again, as part of the method that can be used, uh, that can be used automatically. Um, it also supports the concept of spiking experiments, so you can use references, uh, quantification references that can be included into uh, into a spectrum uh, to provide to provide a reference and you know because of the uh, because of the convolution capabilities within the software which i will refer to in a minute you can even handle uh, multiplets and this is mainly because of the global spectral convolution capability so when you use sma you are using all the power of the global spectral convolution uh, this algorithm will deconvolve all the signals in the spectrum and then group them in multiplets and it will do so in full automation. It's a very robust and, and well validated routine. It has been used for many years within within MNOVA in many different analyses. It can recognize prior to doing the fitting at the convolution, it can recognize um, all the all the signals that are relevant or that are of interest. Um, and we have been using it in the software for many years, but it is not really ideal for quantification. So we have extended it to what we call QGSD. And QGSD uh, basically builds on the capability of GSD, of the Global Spectral Convolution Algorithm, but it is optimized for quantification. And what this means is that uh, the fitting process uh, it's it's designed to, for example, handle the uh, peaks that deviate from the ideal kind of Laurentian line shape. So it can it can handle that kind of situation uh, much better than GSD can. It does use the residuals to optimize the fit uh, for quantification purpose. And it can also make decisions automatically uh, on the converging cycles that it actually runs. So it can it can work in a more optimal fashion from the perspective of uh, using the um, from the perspective of optimizing the resource the computing resources that you have. Okay, um, it is very much involving in that evolving that direction, and. We have tested it extensively from the perspective of quantification, and we have found it to be uh, superior to other alternative decomposition methods, which are also available even within the. Uh, a couple of the tools uh, that also fit into this workflow and which you will benefit from when you use SMA. Uh, the first one is what we call SQA, which is the spectral quality assessment. And basically, this is a tool that checks. Uh, for the that sex for the quality of the data and its suitability for quantification it can be run uh, regularly well it can be run every time you run an SMA experiment or it can be run on a regular basis for example to periodically check uh, the performance of your instrument uh, to ensure that the spectral quality is sufficient for the analysis that you are trying to conduct and that the analysis is going to be reliable and that the acquisition parameters are suitable for quantification. So there is a lot of know-how built into the into this algorithm as to how experiments should be run to be quanti to be quantitative uh, or, or reliably quantitative when using NMA. And in addition, you have a second tool, which is what we call the advice analysis tool. And this basically is a decision making, it's an algorithm that decides how to best process the data on the basis of the parameters of the of the spectrum to be able to quantify optic optimal in automation okay so basically you have 
um, the system is able to self-quality check, is able to make decisions as to what the optimal processing should be for the type of data that it is dealing with, and then it has advanced quantification capabilities which are built for automation. And this allows you to use it for many applications. I mean, some of the examples that uh, we regularly work with is analysis, for example, of edible oils, analysis of pharmaceuticals to quantify APIs and, and other components in a tablet, uh, but also to give you an idea of some of the complexity that you can get to. We've also used it for identifying and quantifying metabolites, for example, in fermentation broth, or for amino acids in tissue extract, etc. Um, I think uh, this is all for now. Uh, I'm going to pass to Pablo, who is going to show us the tool working. He's going to explain to us uh, how to build a method and how to deploy a method. And I will be keeping an eye on any questions that you guys want to ask through the chat as we go. I would encourage you to try to follow the presentation. Uh, if you have, you should have had a link, uh, well, an email with a series of links providing you with data and also uh, the ability to activate the SMA license on your own computer. And Pablo, I think, is going to be trying to drive at a speed for the first part of the demo that allows you guys to follow on your own computers and to try to reproduce analysis so that we can start building some uh, some confidence with the tool. And finally, just before I let Pablo start speaking, uh, I should have mentioned this at the beginning, but the session will also be recorded, so it will be a link will be distributed later, and you will be able to revisit this if you get lost at any point. Okay. So, okay, Pablo, all yours. Okay. So, thanks for coming to the to the webinar. First of all, I wanted to mention that I'm going to use the modern interface. So make sure that uh, you are you are using that that interface. To do that, if you are still in the uh, in the classic uh, graphical user interface, you will need to go to Edit Preferences and change the theme from here to Classic to Modern. So you go to Edit Preferences and change the theme to Modern. Then you will need to, to restart the MNOVA. And the second step will be to make sure that you have already installed the SMA plugin. To, to double check that, you will need to go to the menu File, Advanced Plugins, and check that you don't, you don't have the SMA plugin listed here in Available or in Updates. It should appear in the, under, the installed, in, under the Installed tab. So you should get it here. I'm going to use the version 2.06. So if you don't have it under the install tab, make sure that you check in the available or updates and click on the install or update button uh, to install it or update it. Uh, so uh, once you have changed the interface to the modern, check that you have the SMA plugin already installed. I'm going to, to load the Aspirin uh, C document. In the, in the folder containing the data set that I send you, there is an MNOVA document with this name. So just double click on it and you will get uh, the proton spectrum of the, the Aspirin. It's a, a sample of a tablet containing different different compounds. So the next step will be to go to the quantitation ribbon. Here you select quantitation and the first button of the of that ribbon will be the simple mixture analysis. So you click on it and you will get display the simple mixture analysis dialog box. Okay so you go to quantitation simple mixture analysis and now we are going to load the libraries that I send you. So you click on the libraries button here, this libraries button, and that will allow you to select the folder containing the data set that I send you. So you click on the select library and you browse in your hard disk to search for the SMA libraries. So again, you go to quant 
to quantitation, simple mixture analysis, you click on the libraries button, you click on the select library, and you go to the path containing the data sets, and you select the SMA libraries button. Once there, you select the Aspirin library, and you click on OK. OK, so now you should get the, the Aspirin here. The next step uh, will be to click on the uh, Read Parameters button. Doing that, we'll go to the metadata, and we'll import the values of the sample weight, reference weight, number of scans, receiver gain, and pulse width. If your if your experiment if your data set doesn't con, doesn't contain that information, you could also manually add those values. But in that case, uh, the metadata contains the information about the sample weight, the reference weight, the number of scans, receiver gain, receiver gain, etc. So you click on the read parameters button, and that information will be parsed. But again, if you don't have it, you can manually type it. And that's it. Once you have loaded the library and the information about the, the sample weight and reference weight, you will only need to click on the Analyze Current Mixture button. You click on it, and you will get the results. Let me put it there. You will get the, the results of all the components of that mixture. You will see that all appears in different colors. So we have the acetyl salicylic acid with that concentration, the salicylic acid, ascorbic, acetic, and citric acid. If you double click on any of uh, those uh, compounds, you will get the simple mixture analysis compound details. So let's bring it to here. For example, and make this a little bit bigger. From, from this window, you will be able to, to check the multiplets that uh, you are using for the analysis. So you can see here, for example, that for the acetyl salicylic acid, you are, you are using this multiplet here, this other multiplet here. You could, you could double click on it to jump to the spectrum and to analyze if the integration or multiplicity is, is okay. So you can check the integral values to see if any of the integrals is uh, wrong or whatever. You could move from, from here with the blue arrow buttons to a different compound. So in that case, we have this salicylic acid. You could double check the integrals again by clicking on them. Scorbic, for example. In that case, for example, in the ascorbic, you have these uh, two integrals which are integrating pretty close. But in this case, there is a, a signal which is close to the pre-saturated uh, signal of water. So maybe that that value could be wrong. Indeed, the concentration value is far from the other signal. So you could uncheck that value and apply the changes, and you will see how the ascorbic ASIC uh, value will be updated. So you apply changes, it will reanalyze, and you will see how that value will be changed according into account that uh, it will only use those two values. So you could, let's put it here, you could continue analyzing the remaining signals, in that case, we have these two values here, which are pretty close. Let me move this to here. And again, we are already at the, at the beginning. Obviously, uh, the, most, the most important part of the analysis will be the, the implementation or the, the building of, the, of, your, of your mixture experiment. So if you click on the edit uh, experiment uh, button, it will display, uh, edit mixture button, it will display the information about your mixture. So in that case, we have uh, the first compound will be the reference, which includes information about the color, about the molecular weight, and 
about the formula, which is the one of the most important part of the of the mixture of, of your mixture. In that case, we have different options. So you could create a formula uh, containing concentration uh, information. You could also use mass, mass, uh, a standard mass equation, a purity, or even you could build your own uh, your own your own equation. Uh, the same for the remaining compounds. So in that case, we have the acetyl salicylic acid with information about the multiplets that appear on your mixture. So you could uh, include those multiple ranges, uh, the multiplicity of the multiplets, the J couplings, and the integrals of those multiplets. So you you will give in the description of all the multiplets that you want to search in your in your mixture. The same for the salicylic, with the information about the molecular weight. You can change the colors. You can select the colors that you want to be appear on your screen. The same here with the applicable multiple regions, and and that's it. Once once you have finished, uh, you could you could report uh, your result just by clicking on this button. And you will get, oops, I I didn't have a, a layout here. Let me delete that. And you will get uh, the result in the results folder. So you can see here the PDF file containing your your result and the table with information about all the multiplets that we have used and the results of each uh, compound. Okay, now uh, we don't have uh, too much time, so uh, I'm going to show you another way to to create an experiment. And um, for that, you will only need to to release your your mouse and and enjoy. You you don't have that uh, those the data sets that I'm going to use uh, during this part of the demo. So just relax, relax and and watch your screen. I'm going to load now a different data set. Let me close this just to show you uh, another another way to create uh, to create your your experiments. In that case, this is a mixture of uh, different compounds. That sample was provided by the F80 team of, at Rheinstetten uh, Brucker site in in Germany. And it's a mixture of, of different compounds. So for that, let's let's create the mixture of your compound, uh, starting for a document containing the individual uh, data sets. So we have here a document containing different spectra with uh, pure compounds. So to build your experiment, just go to the quantitation ribbon again. You click on the simple mixture analysis and you click on the new mixture button and you start to build your uh, your analysis. So you, we could add a name first, for example. Now the, the name of the first compound, the MS, we select the color, we select the type, which is a compound, we select the, we type the molecular weight. And for the formula, we could uh, just add the, the information about the multiple regions manually, or we could click on this button to import ranges automatically from the active spectrum. So we click on it, we select the spectrum that we want to be included, and we click on the continue button. And you will see how the, the multiple range information has been included in this section. So once you're happy, with the compound you click on the add compound to mixture and you go to the next so you jump to the lactic acid and you continue adding the information lactic acid we change the color to get a different color this is a compound it's not a reference molecular weight is 100 okay and for the formula again you could 
use uh, you could use the the current spectrum to import those multiplets to to here. Again, you click on the add compounds to mixture. Oops, I think I used it a comma instead of a dot, and you click on the add compound uh, to mixture. You go to the next one, which is malic acid, and you continue adding. Oops, malic acid. You change the color. It's a compound. Molecular weight is 178.05. And again, for the formula, you import the multiplets. Okay. Go to the next, phenylalanine. We change the color. Okay, it's a compound, molecular weight. Oops, 65.09. And for the formula, you click on OK and add compounds to mix. So, and finally, the reference, which will be the succinic acid. So, oops, succinic acid, it will be my reference. Let's select here the reference and again for the formula from current spectrum. And finally, add compound to mixture. And that's it. We have uh, Easily create a mixture from from the data set that you have in an MNOVA document. You click on OK, and you will get the, the mixture. Another way to to create a, your mixture will be to to search in in a database that you have previously prefilled. So imagine that you have a database with uh, different compounds, and uh, Let's create a new mixture and let's use the assistant for that. We click on the assistant button and it will, it will appear uh, this uh, mixture creation assistant telling you that you are using uh, this document, which is this one, to, to search in your database uh, for some information. So let's connect to the database, which contains uh, different data sets and we have the capability to, to search by test uh, or to search by peaks or multiplets. So let's search for those peaks in our database. Once the searching has finished, you will see that uh, in that database it found five compounds. So you, can, you could click on the view all button to display uh, those data sets in stack in a stack mode so you will get a an stack mode of uh, of the mixture and of all the five spectra that mnova has found in your in your database so it will allow you to select if the match uh, is correct or it could be a false positive for example so once you have the once the the search has finished, you will get, uh, let's move this to there to expand, let's put it here. You will get uh, this stack plot and you could easily check or to visualize if, if the compounds if, if those spectra that are in the, in the database are matching with the with the experiment. The the spectrum at the bottom in black is our mixture, and the first spectrum here in red is the succinic acid. So we have here that uh, there is a could be a match here. The same for the phenylalanine in yellow. So we have peaks here, here, here. I don't know, for the DMS, we have a, a green peak here, which appears in our mixture, etc. So once we are happy with the, with the result, uh, we could add to working document. 
and add to current mixture. So here we have the mixture that we have created from our from our database with information about uh, the multiple ranges, about the molecular weight, and we will only need to select the compound that we want to use as a reference. So for example, you know, we can select this as here. And for example, let's see, we include the name and you click on OK and you have created the your mixture. So there are like uh, three different methods to create the mixture of your compound. Will be One will be uh, the manual method just by typing all the information about the compounds, manually typing. The other will be by importing the, the multiplets from the those spectra that you have already acquired from the isolated spectra. And another will be by searching uh, in, your, in your database to find those peaks. So for example, in that case, once you have uh once you have the the mixture again you click on the red parameters button you click on the analyze and it will analyze uh, it will analyze your your mixture telling you that there are about 50 milligrams per compound in your in your mixture and again you could check uh you could check in the in the results uh, to see the integration of all the all the signals, so you could change here to navigate through the different compounds in your in your mixture and to check that the results are very close integrating one or another signal and and that's it let's I don't know if there is time for questions. Santi, do you want to check? Uh, yes, yeah. thank you, Pablo. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. OK, great. So guys, just to maybe recap a little bit, um, we the, what the tool allows you to do is to build a library of mixtures uh, and each one of these mixtures you can then throw against your current your, the data set you acquired today uh, to to basically perform the analysis, identify the compounds uh, that you define for that mixture and quantify them on the basis of the reference that you identified for that mixture. Uh, in order to build those mixtures, as Pablo was explaining, you can do it in a from a more manual to a, to a more assisted fashion. So you can do it, first of all, by typing all the relevant parameters for each one of the compounds and adding them to the mixture. But also you can do them by importing a spectra uh, for each one of the isolated compounds and very easily then do a peak picking, a peak picking or multiplet analysis and, and adding that to the mixture. And finally, also, if you use the Nova Spectral Database, then that would allow you to build um, libraries of all your different compounds of interest uh, and to very easily build mixtures or experiments, yeah, mixtures to throw at your at your experimental at your experimental data. Um, just to remind you, the software is using uh, below um, all that capability. Uh, so, you know, it's applying the convolution, it's applying QGSD, which is the convolution optimized for quantification purposes. And also, it can use advice processing, which will make decisions as to how best to process the spectrum for quantification, uh, etc. Now, uh, Hopefully, I think the great majority of you who have attended this session uh, would have already SMA activated uh, in your in the software. You should have received an email uh, prior to this session uh, explaining how to activate the SMA plugin. Uh, I would ask you, if you have not, 
uh, you know, to write to us uh, and ask us for the details. You can do that at support at mestrelab.com. Pablo, I'm really dropping you in it now. Uh, and we will make sure that you get the that you get the sample data and that you get the plugin activated. And in the next uh, 48 hours, we will send you a recording of this session. So don't worry if you could not follow it fully this first time, you will be able to uh, to practice uh, at home with the recording uh, in your own in your own time. Okay. Um, so any for any of those issues, uh, do do write to us, and we will make sure that you have everything that you need in order to in, in order to be able to practice and to use the plugin. Now, it may be that a number of you who attended this session have a specific problems in mind. Uh, you know, you may have a specific quantification uh, jobs that you want to do. You may have compounds that you want to you want to add to a library. Some of you may just be joining for curiosity and to learn more, but some of you may have this uh, very specific challenge. If that is the case, uh, again, uh, if if you are trying to build your own library with your own data and you find any issues, so you are struggling, again, please get in touch and we will do our best to to help you with it. 